It's here, y'all. Logitech G's first keyboard with magnetic switches. Let's get into this and take a look at the keyboard. Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Havoc. Welcome back to the channel. Like I said in the intro, we have Logitech G's first keyboard with magnetic switches. I'm happy to introduce you to the Logitech G Pro X 10 Keyless Rapid. Let's get to unboxing this and take a look at these magnetic analog switches. Here we are, the box, and I'm super excited for this one, y'all. It's the first magnetic analog switches on a Logitech G keyboard. So, like I said, it's the Pro X 10 Keyless Rapid. It's part of their Pro line of gear they release in Q3, Q4 of 2024. We have the keyboard here, talks about the magnetic switch a little bit right there. On the top, Logitech G, the back, our traditional rapid trigger, 10 keyless, key control, light, sync RGB. Comes with a six foot detachable cable. I believe it's USB-C, pretty sure it is. Onboard light profile, and then a one millisecond report rate. This video is powered by our friends over at Pison. This is their 87 watt power box. It includes a 10,000 milliamp battery. Let's take a look at it. Inside the box, you get a user manual, the power bank, and a USB-C to USB-C cable. A unique thing about this is it's not just a power bank. You can also use it as a wall power adapter or AC adapter for a laptop, your phone, etc. pass through power. So we have right here a USB-A plug that can do 22 and a half watts max. And then we have a USB-C plug, which can do 65 watts max. Another really cool thing about this power bank is this right here is an LCD display. So what you do is you press this button on the top and then the LCD display lights up and shows you how much power you have left on the internal battery. Once again, thank you to Pison for powering this video. If you wanna know where you can pick this up, I'll put a link in the description below. And here we go. Folding it open, like always, it tells you how to hook it up, download G-Hub. There's a little QR code if you wanna make it easy with your phone. If you wanna do the key, control light sync, get G-Hub. We have the nice Logitech G wrapping paper inside the box. We'll set the keyboard aside for right now. Look at what's in the box, paperwork. And then down here we have, it looks like our USB-C cable that's inside there. Yeah, so this is a USB-A to a USB-C cable, which is great because we want everything USB-C now, standardized. We're gonna unwrap it. This is the white version. Ooh, it looks nice. This does come in black and magenta. So choose your color of keyboard there. Logitech G logo up there. We have our options here for game mode. We've talked about this in other videos. Game mode, you click that and it disables the Windows key and then the context key right there. That's if you wanna do like a right click or whatever, you can click that button. And then you have our brightness settings button right there. We have all of our audio up here. We have, you know, forward, back, play, pause, mute. We have our volume rocker, which is great on the keyboard. As you can see, this is the 10 keyless, but we have everything else we're used to. One thing to note, unlike the other keyboards in the Logitech family, these buttons up here are not like rubberized. They are actual plastic clicky. So that's a real nice quality you know, improvement there. You can't really see it, but underneath here, the F keys, maybe we can get up here. Underneath some of the F keys, there are little, look like computer chips, memory chips. And this keyboard can have, I think it's four or five onboard. It looks like four. No, it's three. Three onboard memory um, controllers. So if you want to have different settings for maybe different games you're playing, you can change, you can just hit the F function key and then hit like F2 and it'll change over to that memory bank and have all your keys mapped like you want in that specific you know, memory bank. As we kind of take a look at this, the quality of the keyboard is great. It is solid. It's got this kind of a brushed aluminum right here. 
Of course, we have all of our strong plastic. This thing is built to last. Coming over on the back side, and we have our risers. So you can do one level of rise, and then here's your second level of rising. We have down here our rubberized grips to you know keep it in place. Looking over on all the other sides, we have up here the USB-C connection. And this is Logitech's first magnetic analog linear key switch. And it kind of sounds like the clicky key switches, but what's awesome about this keyboard is there's no actuator in like physical actuator in there that you need to like press it all the way down or halfway down for it to, you know, actuate. You can program this in Logitech G hub to be maybe even like just barely pushing the key and it would trigger it. Let's hear what this sounds like. So that's what it sounds like. If you're, if you're curious, let's go ahead and get this plugged in and installed on G hub so we can see more about it. Here we are in G hub and you can see we have the pro X 10 keyless rapid. What we need to do is do a firmware update. So let's go ahead and install that. Now that the keyboard has had its firmware update, let's take a look at the switches. So here we are in G hub. It's the analog switch overview. We're talking about actuation point, rapid trigger and multi-action actuation point. We can set this from 0.1 to four millimeters. So you can barely put pressure on the key. Let's say the W key and the little dude in the game will start moving, barely pushing the W key. So that's really kind of cool. Now for rapid trigger, that is the sensitivity, the distance of the key needs to be lifted before that action resets. And we can set that between 0.1 and two millimeters. So using that W key example, again, if we have it set at 0.5, we're not going to like press the key only 0.5 millimeters down. We're still going to like go all the way down, you know, press it all the way down with rapid trigger. It's now we set the distance of how far up or we lift off of the key that that trigger sensitivity resets, right? So when the guy will stop moving in the game, the multi action, we can send, you know, multiple actions to a key. That's pretty standard within the Logitech keyboard lineups. Let's party. So before we get into looking at the switches here, there's one cool thing I want to show you about this keyboard. Here we are back at the keyboard and we have our game button. We can see we've turned that on and now we can't hit the windows key. It does nothing. You can see the game mode button is flashing. That's letting us know we hit a key that's disabled. We can turn game mode off. A nice feature is if we hold down function and hit the game mode button, we now lock that game mode button. So we are stuck in game mode. If we accidentally, you know, trip beer button mashing and we accidentally turn it off, it won't turn off. So we're stuck now in game mode and that's really cool. So we, you know, we don't actually hit the windows key. Now to get out of it, we'll hold down function, hit the game mode button again to turn it off. So. The game mode button lock, that's a really nice feature I like that, especially for people like me that button mash in games. Back here in G hub, we have our actuation point, rapid trigger and key priority. So what we can do is we can select all the keys on the keyboard, which I don't want to do that. So we'll deselect all, and then we can choose just the keys we want to set. So let's do our WASP. So we'll do W, A, S, and D by default. It's at two millimeters. You know, we can type in what we want right here, or we can use a slider bar. This should reset it. Yeah. Reset the keys. The actuation point is the distance a key needs to be pressed down before it registers. Okay. So let's do WAST. Let's set these to 0.5, like we talked about. And now you can see on the keys here, they're lit up blue. It says 0.5. Here is the default actuation point. You know, if we want to reset everything, it'll go there. Rapid trigger. We can see the down button or the down icon there is for the actuation. Now we can set 
our rapid trigger. So let's go ahead and enable rapid trigger. We'll select our keys. It's default to 0.5. Game mode here, you can see the keys that are disabled by default are in this gray kind of stripes. And then the keys that are black cannot be modified. Then the keys that are like this blue stripe are the ones disabled by you. So you can go ahead and if you want to, for some reason, disable the right alt button. Now in game mode, the right alt button won't work anymore. Um, you can disable pretty much any key on here with the exception of, yeah, you can't do the key for the lights and the windows or the context key or the volume rocker. Go up here to your key assignments. We can do remapping. So if you want to assign your keys to different functionalities, you can do that. A really great thing about the Logitech keyboards um, as the past, I don't know, a couple years is their layers. So you have a base layer and the base layer is just the keyboard by default. And you can see here we're on our base layer and we can set some presets if we wanted to. Then you have your function layer and the function layer is when you press the function key on the keyboard and then you can press any other key. So we're on our function layer and we want to do something with the Z key. So we'll click on Z and we will remap it. And when we do a modifier, so let's do shift and then just a key press Z we want it to, to type the letter B. Confirm. So now we see on the Z key, it's the letter B. And you can see it says we have to press function shift Z. So if I press the Z right now, it types the letter Z. If I do function, shift Z, it types a B. That's the function layer. It gives you an additional layer of what you can do with all the keys on the keyboard. Now for the G shift layer, you can see it says up here, G shift button has not been assigned. We need to assign that. So what we'll do is we'll get over here on the base layer. If you're on the G shift layer, you can't assign the G shift key while you're on that layer. So we'll go on the base layer. Let's assign this kind of squiggly key up here as our G shift button. So we'll click on it and we'll go remap to G shift. And now what we'll do is we can press that button and that'll be our G shift button. So we'll go over here to our G shift layer and then we'll click on, we'll use that letter Z again and we will remap. And for our assignment, we're just gonna leave our modifier and event type all the same assignment let's go commands and then we're going to see if it'll open up the windows emoji panel confirm and confirm so what should happen here is we'll hold down our g shift button and press z and it'll open up the emoji panel so i'm holding down our g shift button press z there you go there's our emoji panel and don't have to click a different button command to do that so you can set this stuff for like anything in windows Etc. I mean, you can probably set this stuff to do OBS shortcuts um, just with single buttons as opposed to having to do, you know, the multiple button commands in OBS, etc. Next up in our lighting settings, we have all the presets that come with the keyboard. So we have fixed breathing color cycle. We have freestyle. So if you want to set up your own color commands and then different animations. So let me go back to presets here. We'll do a top down. You can see what the keyboard looks like with these different settings. This is fixed. Let's go color wave. You can see kind of color waves through there. We got starlight. Kind of just different little keys or lighting up yellow. We can go over here to animations and then what we'll do. This is contrastic. This is lightning. So it's kind of, you know, ocean wave. 
I'm guessing the blue here is going to yep, take over the keyboard. We got red, white, and blue. It just cycles through the colors. And then we have vertical. This is going to go up. Then you can do different cycles of however you want it, but I'm going to put it back here to fixed. We have this quick group option. We can set it to just WASP. We can do um, numbers. So it automatically selects all the numbers for us, and then we can assign a color for it. Our function keys. So this is just for quick, like quick selection. Our modifier keys, arrow keys, and then all the keys. Go into our device settings. We can see over here on the left side, we have three different slots for memory profiles. Our onboard memory is disabled right now. We can turn it back on. We can turn it off if we want to use it. Defragment the keyboard because the memory, or restore the profiles, and then um, effects store on the device. We can click the Meet Pro X 10 keyless rapid if you want to know more and learn about the keyboard. Custom assignment guides, analog switch guide, just gives you more information about that stuff. Shows that our firmware is up to date, but this is where you would go if you want to check you know, your firmware, make sure you're all up to date and everything. And there you have it. That is the Logitech G Pro X 10 keyless rapid. So happy to have this in hand. I can't wait to get into a game and start getting it configured and just seeing what this thing can do. If you like this video, I appreciate it. If you liked, subscribe and hit that bell so you know when the next video drop. Until next time, stay safe, have fun, and keep doing good.